I thought I'd try something a bit different. Why haven't you played Halo Combat Evolved? I've heard lots of excuses, with most of them deriving from the fact that the entire FPS genre on consoles was, for a long time, based on being the Halo killer. With the advent of the Call of Duty series, first person shooters came to dominate the industry. Halo itself spawned a massive franchise, encompassing the requisite sequels, books, and short films, notably Halo Legends. But its sequels and derivatives have all, so far, failed to capture what made Halo a great game, and these failures have contributed to the cloud of misguided hate that dominates the conversation on the game itself. So be it. So be said. Dispels of the rest. Another excuse I've heard relates to its controls. Most of these complaints come from the PC quarter of game reviewers, who find it apposite that they should have to stoop down to play a game that was the first to bring PC-style controls to the console. Before this, to shoot in most console video games, you literally had to stop and aim. GoldenEye N64, Medal of Honor, heck, even Siphon Filter were clumsy games because of this. Halo was the first game to successfully bring the smoothness of PC aim to the mainstream on consoles. Maybe not quite the precision, which advocated the use of auto-aim to help players hit their targets, but all of the smoothness was there, and the entire industry took notice. Halo's approach to shooting and movement was natural and intuitive, and the freedom of movement moved the focus on tactics for this game into the spotlight. Halo's shooting mechanics were not based on precision, in fact, most of your guns were almost never pinpoint accurate, but on evaluating each gun's strengths and tactical applications and applying them to your movements. Console controllers, despite the earlier days of shooter games, had almost always done movement controls better, with their analog feel contrasting favorably with the digital movements of a keyboard. The ability to strafe and shoot unhindered by the need to stop and aim your shots greatly upped the pacing of firefights, and allowed the game to focus on providing some of the greatest enemy AI of its generation to provide a challenge to match your new abilities. With this enhanced challenge came a reduced need for secrets and exploration, for better or for worse. The combat would be helped by limiting the amount of weapons a player could carry to two. This added an even greater emphasis on tactics and ammo conservation, as you had to decide what weapon would be suitable for every encounter and apply it effectively and efficiently. The inclusion of a button to automatically throw grenades added yet another layer of depth, whereas before you would have had to select the grenades individually before throwing them, limiting their effectiveness in most battles. Now there were a practical choice. The inclusion of third-person vehicle sections would be another game-changer for the first-person shooter genre, and it definitely helped that the vehicle controls were smooth and intuitive, a fact which many other games still struggle with today. Halo, because of its super lad of new mechanical focus, was like no other shooter on the market. It truly was Combat Evolved. You play as a green armored space marine named Master Chief, charged with protecting an AI named Cortana while you and your fellow marines explore a vast mysterious ring world. Your enemies in the game are the Covenant Empire, a collection of different races who collectively worship a race known as the Forerunners, who built Halo and then vanished. The game world provides plenty of mysterious clues as to the ring's ultimate purpose, the study and containment of a parasitic race called simply the Flood. Master Chief then encounters a native AI called 343 Guilty Spark who leads the Chief towards his master's solution to the Flood threat. Halo doesn't kill Flood, it kills their food. Humans, Covenant, whatever. The Ring's purpose finally revealed the Master Chief and Cortana steal the key to the superweapon and come up with a plan to locate Captain Keys, the commander of the Marine forces on the Ring, and use his pass key to detonate the Pillar of Autumn and destroy Halo. They retrieve the key, but fail to stop Keys from getting absorbed by the Flood intelligence. Arriving at the Pillar of Autumn, the stage is set for the final confrontation between the belligerent forces and 343 Guilty Spark. The Master Chief and Cortana successfully activate the self-destruct sequence and escape while the ring tears itself apart in the ensuing explosion. While the overall arc has been done before, the level of immersion woven into the game's design allows for a much more involving story than would otherwise be the case. 
Simplicity is often the best when it comes to video game narratives, and Halo exemplifies the best in minimalist story structure. While the plot skimps on the specific details, the aura of majesty and mystery surrounding Halo provides enough immersion and narrative flow to make this an exciting piece of science fiction in its own right. Halo is a beautifully designed game, with gorgeous vistas and imaginative settings to take your breath away. The character designs are distinctive across the board, with the Covenant providing the best ensemble for the Rogues Gallery. The menagerie of enemies in the subtle and immediate details are all instantly recognizable in terms of threat level and behavior in battle. From flying robots to armored behemoths, from the howling banshee to the plate armored marines, the character and vehicle designs convey more details than a novel ever could. The game shows off an impressive level of graphical power for the time with the flood being noticeably degraded physically, and you can even shoot off individual body parts. From the details in the weapons themselves, with the highlights being the needler and sniper rifle, to the individual pieces of armor on your enemies, this game can still shame a lot of games today. The environments can be gorgeous at most time, and each will provide an experience rivaling other full-length games. One moment you could be exploring a Covenant cruiser, and the next you could be assaulting a fortress in snowy canyons. Each level in Halo is iconic in its own right. The graphics have aged overall, but the game can never be called ugly. It's aged better in terms of its art design than most of its sequels and derivatives. I knew it! The Autumn's accelerating! Keys is going in manual! Hands up everyone, this is it! The music by Martin O'Donnell is a masterpiece collection of iconic themes and overwhelming ambiences. Working with synths and orchestral instruments, as well as a choir sampled from his own voice, he managed to craft some of the most pulse-pounding and beautiful themes in video game history. The attention to tone and melody allows for subtle immersion-building pieces. as well as all-out orchestral bombast. The music helps this game carve out an identity of its own. It may not be a flawless soundtrack, but it still stands as one of gaming's greatest achievements in music. The soundscapes and battle that accompany the music are some of the most fully realized I've ever experienced. With only now games like Battlefield 3 and Far Cry 3 approaching its quality and attention to sonic detail. The Covenant weapons sound appropriately glassy and powerful, while the human weapons pack a major punch, with explosions coming off like miniature nuclear explosions. Plasma weapons will show off a noticeable frying sound effect, and the ambiences in the outdoor environments help the pacing immensely in the calmer moments. Vehicles will carry their own individual identities through sound with the Covenant Banshees, Ghosts, and Raids sounding appropriately otherworldly and ethereal. The human vehicles sound imposing, with the Scorpion tank actually feeling like it weighs several hundred tons thanks to its sound design. Even all of the individual weapons have their own melee sound effects. The dialogue in-game isn't story intensive until you reach the cutscenes, at which point the game does get a bit exposition heavy. But the individual marines and enemies all have distinct personalities, with the grunts being utterly hilarious in their level of ineptitude and cowardice. The grunts and marines will spout some truly hilarious battle dialogue that has to be heard to be believed. What's more is that the dialogue is not simply random, but context specific, with different actions spewing different reactions. Sometimes all I want to do is listen to the enemy and marine chatter. Laughter, after all, is the best medicine. <laughs> Man, here's where we show those split chin squid head sons of bitches that they could not have picked a worse enemy than the human race. We are going to blow the hell out of those dumb bugs until we don't have anything left to shoot them with. And then we are going to strangle them with their own living guts. Listening to Cortana and 343 Guilty Spark can provide an immense amount of information on the ring's history and its mysteries, as well as insights into the personalities of their respective AIs. He's in my data arrays, a local tab. You can't imagine how exciting this is! 
to have a record of all of our lost time. Human history is fascinating. The level of care given to the sound design is quite frankly awe-inspiring. The only bugbears I have with the sound design in this game are occasional audio glitches and the Master Chief's footsteps, which sadly lack in detail and can become annoying. All three of these factors, story, art design, and sound design, combine to create one of the more immersive games I have ever played. For a 10-year-old game, that's quite an achievement. Only a few games have managed to pull off an equal or higher level of immersion in those terms. But for all of its strengths, it does have a few glaring faults, which I will now present to you to balance the karma scales a bit. While overall character design is pretty good and insanely memorable, the animation quality, especially on the human characters, can get a bit dodgy. The human marines in particular come across as mannequins with lips that don't even bother to try and sync to their dialogue. While off-putting, this is indeed one of those situations where you can blame the tech, but the enemies are what you will be seeing most of the time, so it's not a huge problem. The enemy AI, while full of character, eventually falls into noticeable patterns, especially the Flood, who mostly just Zerg rush you. But that's kind of the point of their presence in the game anyways. Maybe it's because this was the only game I had access to for a two year period, but I can breeze through this game on the second hardest difficulty, no problem. Regardless, it only became really apparent after my quintillionth playthrough, so the average newcomer will still get a huge meaty challenge if he desires it. That's not including your quote unquote friendly AI, which can barely offer a challenge to the enemies in the game. They cannot be relied upon, unless they have a sniper rifle, in which case they suddenly become near omnipotent killing machines for some reason. Your fellow marines will constantly throw grenades with wild abandon, and they will get you killed sometimes, which, if you're going for a no death run on a particular level, can cause you to curse to your heathen gods for judgment. The Library I've heard all of the arguments as to why it's apparently the worst level in video game history, but I'm just not buying it. Sure, it's horrifically samey, the enemy spawn points can get predictable, and the enemy AI makes it more of a slog than a compelling experience, but the library gets a pass precisely because of its intended artistic purpose. It was supposed to sell the Flood as an unrelenting, all-consuming force, and as you shoot your way through the millionth dead marine and or elite, you do come to pine for an end to the madness. It makes you physically and emotionally numb. That's its purpose, but it does its job so well that it's understandable why almost everyone loathes this level. But take it in the right mindset and it can still hold up as part of the overall experience. While the story does provide a lot of details as to the overall plot of the series, setting up any possible future sequels quite nicely I might add, there's still a vagueness to it all that can indeed cause some people to tune it all out. The differences between its approach to the story and its sequels are vast though, with Halo 4 trying and failing to recapture the same minimalist magic of this game. Heck, Halo 2 and 3 became more concerned with politics and heavy handedness than actual effective storytelling. The widening gulf between this game and its sequels, and prequels, have indeed assured it of a place in history, and even accorded it some level of influence. The same principles of great art design and sound design, as well as minimalist story, brought us such gems as Limbo, Dark Souls, and Portal. There is a way to do this sort of thing right, and Halo still stands tall in this respect. Halo Combat Evolved is one of those rare specimens of the early 3D era that actually holds up quite well today. Maybe not graphically, but with its depth of mechanics, art design, and sound, this is still an experience to behold. Widely imitated, massively influential in nearly every form of media and media distribution, this has rarely been bettered, and Halo will forever stand up as a gorgeously immersive science fiction epic. Halo, it's finished. No, I think we're just getting started. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.